So hi everyone, I am Robin Farman Farmian. Sorry, my life goal is to positively impact a minimum of 100 million patients worldwide. I've managed to create a career that doesn't exist where I've leveraged and I've scaled my skill set in order to work on companies, on multiple companies at once, that are poised to impact at least 100 million patients worldwide. One company is working on sleep apnea, which is an $11 billion market. We have a data-driven platform device funded by Peter Thiel. Second company is working on curing cancer by repairing the P53 part of the human cell. When successful, we will be able to cure or treat more than 50% of all cancer. And the third company I'm working on is a unicorn, which means it has an over $1 billion valuation. And we have our FDA and CE mark approval for virtual reality with stroke and brain injury rehabilitation. Now, these are pretty crazy companies, right? Like I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to cure cancer on the side of using video games to make paralyzed people move again. You know when you hear about a crazy entrepreneur from Silicon Valley, like myself, there's a backstory. With me, at the age of 16, I was misdiagnosed with an autoimmune disease. All told, I have had 43 hospitalizations and six major surgeries. Now, when you're facing surgery, and especially when you're a kid, right? You go from hospital system to hospital system, looking for the very best doctors out there. But none of my doctors ever looked at me and said, you know what, Robin? Let's hold off on these surgeries because you're so young and technology is moving so quickly. It could provide better solutions in the near future. None of my doctors ever looked at me and said, you know what, Robin? Technology is hope. But technology is hope. In fact, had digital health IT and just the sheer amount of information we now have access to as patients existed when I was a teenager, I most likely would not have lost three organs. Now, at the age of 26, this is seven years after they had taken out my entire large intestine, my doctors were telling me I was cured, <laughs> but I wasn't and I was in extreme pain. So over a period of years, they kept upping and upping my methadone dose until finally I was on 80 milligrams a day of methadone. This is a massive dose of opiates. And let me tell you, I absolutely hated the drug. So I went back to my next doctor's appointment and I said, I need off this drug now. And they said, okay. Next step would be to surgically implant a morphine pump into your spine. I was like, are you kidding me? I was 26 years old. I was essentially a shut-in. I could barely function. I was on high-dose morphine at that point they wanted to put me on. And they said, essentially, that was the rest of my life. So I said, absolutely not. And I fired my entire healthcare team. Went home that night, dropped my own methadone dose by 40%, essentially went through heroin withdrawal, crawled across the floor for about a week, and I ended up rebuilding my healthcare team with healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, chiropractors, massage therapists that worked with me as a team and a colleague. I ended up getting diagnosed correctly, put on an IV medication called Remicade, and literally within 24 hours of that first dose, I went into remission overnight. So that's what I'm up here to talk to you about, is how the convergence of all of these different exponential technologies are not only changing medicine over the next five to 10 years, but really putting the patient in the driver's seat. Now, when I'm talking about exponential technology, of course, I'm talking about all the sexy ones, right? Robotics, artificial intelligence, sensors, 3D printing, even being able to utilize the power of the crowd. Now, in 60-minute keynotes, I do deep dives into each one of these sections of, of really a perfect storm of technological advancements enabling what I like to call the era of the patient. Today, I'm going to take you through a scenario of what it's like to be a patient now and in the very near future. So right now, what we do is we have a lot of point-of-care diagnostic devices, 
What that means is a diagnostic device that comes to a patient versus the patient having to go to a traditional setting like a hospital or a clinic. So take, for example, the consumer-friendly $99 AliveCore EKG monitor. What this is is a single-lead EKG monitor accessible to patients. So at my house, I'm going to take my EKG, send the data up to the cloud, where it's going to be analyzed by artificial intelligence. And if I do need to see a physician, I can do one on demand, virtually, using telemedicine, FaceTime, Skype, even telepresent robot. In fact, the global telemedicine market is exploding. Right now, actually, in 2015, it was about $18 billion market. By 2021, that is going to more than double to $41 billion. Now, I come to Europe a lot so I can see what's trending here, and I love talking to everyone to see kind of what's important to you and what's going on, in, especially in Greece, but other, other parts of Europe. So I came here today to tell you some stuff that's going on in the United States, some of our trends, and in Silicon Valley. So right now, did you know that more than 70% of routine doctor visits don't actually require being in person? So companies like CVS, this is one of our largest drugstore chains. You can go in there on demand and see a nurse practitioner or a uh, physician's assistant. Well, they recently partnered with one of our top hospitals in the United States called the Cleveland Clinic. And if you do need to see a physician, you can do one on demand from CVS no matter where you are, right? virtually. And Lucille Packard, this is Stanford's Children's Hospital. If you need to see a specialist, what you do is you go into the hospital, sit with your primary care physician, and see all the specialists you need to on video. And Kaiser Permanente, one of our largest managed care organizations. Last year, more than 50% of all of their clinic visits were done virtually. And point-of-care diagnostics, or what I like to call diagnostics on demand. We are seeing a wide array hit the consumer space. Companies like the Core Wellness Tracker, they did a crowdfunding campaign last year and are expected to launch by the end of the year. This is direct-to-consumer. It does not go through doctors or hospitals. It is an at-home spectrometer so that you can analyze your own blood labs. You take your blood at home, you can do things like glucose, cholesterol, even the inflammatory markers. Everly Well, this, they just recently did a few more million in funding. It is a mail-order laboratory. So you go on the internet as a consumer, order a lab test, about $170 or so per lab test. This does not go through doctors. This does not go through hospitals or your healthcare system. This goes right to the patient. They send you a test kit, you prick the end of your finger, give a couple drops of blood, send it back, they use CLIA-certified labs, which means it's medical grade, right? You can do things like cholesterol, of course, thyroid, and even all of the STDs. And we're seeing a wide array of apps hit the market. I want to raise a hand in the room. How many people have seen a neurologist in their life? Very few, maybe a handful of you guys. So that's the problem, because with Diseases like dementia, pharmaceutical intervention are only successful at the early stages. But the problem is most of us don't actually go to a neurologist until it's so advanced that it's disrupting our daily life. Well, BrainCheck has taken the standard neurological exams that you have in a hospital, and they've gamified it and electronified it. So for five to 10 minutes, once a month, once a year, you can play this game on your iPad. By the way, it's a freemium model, which means there's a free version. And we're starting to see clinical grade apps as well. So paratherapeutics, as of last week, the FDA just approved it for the first digital therapeutic. This is a really big deal. This one in particular is for addiction. And everything on this slide is accessible to patients, FDA or CE mark approved, and under $300. Raise your hands in the room. How many people have children who have had an earache? Quite a few, right? Yes. So companies like Cellscope, you plug it into your smartphone, look in your child's ear. If there's a problem, it will tell you, and you can see a physician on demand through the app, right? Same thing with ClinicCloud, which is a stethoscope. Philips Lumify, this is really interesting. Traditionally, 
ultrasound machines, thousands of dollars only found in hospitals. Philips now, you can get an ultrasound that plugs into your smartphone for $300 a month subscription model. Again, for consumers. Say you're pregnant and maybe you want an ultrasound for a couple of months. And this is me. This is me in my apartment. I have hacked my own healthcare in order to get the vast majority in my apartment or within a two block radius. Now, this isn't something my, my physicians told me to do, right? This is something I figured out on my own and it's accessible and you can figure it out no matter what country you live in. So right here, I'm getting Remicade. I've been on it for about 18 years. This is a pretty hardcore drug. I it used to take about five or six hours in the infusion center at the hospital. And my recovery time was about eight days. Now, I have to get this every six weeks, so that was a significant amount of time in my life. And it was a horrible experience. I go into the hospital, and there's constant noise, there's no windows, there's tons of other patients. And the biggest problem is that I'm immunocompromised. And I would go in there and I would be, uh, see you know, infectious disease. It's a terrible place for a patient. Now that I've pulled it into my home, my recovery time is two days, just from the change of experience. I even get to direct to consumer IVs for saline solution. There's a company called IV Doc. Again, it does not go through your doctor, it does not go through your hospital. It goes direct to consumer, just like app, uh, just like Uber, you go on the app, you order a nurse on demand for about $200. They come to your house, they give you IV saline solution and any vitamins you'd like by IV. Now, for someone like me without a large intestine and Crohn's disease, this is a big deal because I used to have to go to the ER two to three times a year just to get saline solution IV, which is a horrific use of resources, right? Now, I do it at my home. But you know who their biggest client is? Patients with hangovers. <laughs> so all of this technology, though, is really raising the bar on the interaction between the patient and the physician. So if you think back to the title of my talk, the patient as the CEO. Think about it, a CEO of a corporation, you're not an expert in marketing, finance, engineering, right, legal. You hire the best experts in a corporation. They do their job, report back to you, and together as a team, you decide on a direction for the company to go into. But as CEO, you are the one who is ultimately responsible that the vision is carried out and that the company overall is successful. So I ask you, why should being a patient be any different? Right? You are the expert in your body. You hire the best experts, whether they're doctors, nurses, whatever. They do their job and then you take their advice, right? But you are the decision maker. But I do understand that not everyone is as type A, massively overdriven as I am, and taking control of your own healthcare, this is terrifying, especially if you're not feeling well. So that's why we're starting to see lots more health and life coaches pop up in the healthcare system. I'm a huge advocate of this. This can be done by artificial intelligence, by the way, and it also can be done virtually. Now, these health and life coaches, they do not need to be healthcare professionals. They need to be problem solvers. Because one of the biggest problems in medicine is that once a patient leaves the doctor's office, they don't really understand sometimes how to integrate and execute on treatment plans, especially if it's brand new and they've never done something like that before. So health and life coaches can help not only integrate on different uh, healthcare solutions, but execute them on them and manage them on a daily basis with you so you have help and somebody there to hold your hand. So I'd like to leave you with this thought. 100% of us in this room at some point in our lives are gonna be patients, right? So I ask you, now that you're the CEO of your own healthcare team, and I mean every single person in this room, you are now the CEO of your own healthcare team, how are you gonna start to change your behavior? today. Thank you.